We've invited Thomas and Heather Doherty, both genealogists, to the show. Welcome to FIRST. Thank you. Heather, you focus on Delaware research. So what resources are available to Delawareans interested in mapping out their ancestry? Uh, well, there's plenty of records available, um, either online or actual physical buildings. There's uh, the Dover, Delaware archives, and there's recorder of deeds, there's courthouses, and online you could go to Ancestry.com or uh, Fold3, which uh, formerly known as Footnote, or FamilySearch.org. They are very good resources. They have plenty of information. What's a good starting point, though, for people who may have just watched our story and, and don't know where to begin? What would Look, be a natural first step? Well, I, I tell my students at the University of Delaware Lifelong Learning to first interview your relatives, mm -hmm. find out what they know, and not just one relative because they may not know the same thing that another relative knows, or they might know, might, they might think something is correct and the other relative will give you the correct answer. <laughs> so you have to weigh all the things that relatives say, but that's a place to start. And write that all down and maybe put it into a genealogical software so you have it organized. Mm -hmm. And then confirm what they say. Now you teach a class at the Academy of Lifelong Learning, as you mentioned. Yes. Um, the show's WHYY has a show. Henry Louis Gates is yes. Finding Your Roots. Mm -hmm. Great yes. show. Have you found that shows like that, because they're gaining in popularity, has it increased attendance in your class? Has it increased an interest in genealogy overall? Well, the most noticeable difference I had in genealogy was a loss of clients when we had the um, the recession. Mm -hmm. But I've, they've picked up again, so I'm guessing it might be due to the economy. But um, I know there is a lot more interest, like on the social networks, mm -hmm. uh, Twitter. There's tons of people into genealogy on there, people asking questions, uh, getting a second opinion on a document, like, what does this say? I can't read it, you know, because mm -hmm. the handwriting is old. So it seems like there, there is a picked up interest due to the shows, and it's great that they have those shows because, you know, in my profession, genealogy, you don't, see a prime time show <laughs> about something you do because but they make it interesting and fun and I think it's great. And what about class size time? I've been teaching since the mid 90s mm -hmm. uh, at the uh, Lifelong Learning and the classes have actually increased in size quite a bit and it, there's a, and one reason that there's a lot more interest is because the the uh, information that's online is increasing dramatically. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, in, in the past, you'd have to go to the uh, uh, Mormon libraries, which are at uh, most Mormon churches in the country. We have, I think, three places in Delaware to order microfilms from them, uh, and they'll be shipped to you from Salt Lake City. But now you can get uh, some of that information online, and over the next 10-year period, maybe a little bit less than that, they're going to put all 2.5 million uh, microfilm rolls, every frame digitized online, and indexed. Wow, that they have 150,000 <laughs> in, in indexers around the world uh, doing the indexing right now. And Tom, you were a former president of the Delaware Genealogical Society. Yes. Let's talk about that organization and, okay. and what kind of resources it offers its members. We uh, generate uh, resources ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we have a Delaware Families Project where we are compiling a, from submissions by our members, we are compiling a five generation genealogy of people who lived in Delaware between 1787 and 1800. If a person has uh, uh, someone of that, uh, that fits that criteria in their genealogy, then they can uh, uh, submit a, a, a write up. Mm -hmm. And we'll go over those write-ups and try to make sure the sources are correct and it's a full uh, academic style uh, genealogy going back to their grandparents and then forward to their grandchildren. So the overall it would be five generations. We're planning to publish the first book in fall of this year mm -hmm. and it'll contain about 130 of those families. And, I and we have no, don't discriminate by whether they're wealthy families or poor families. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of them is a, is a family of slaves. Oh, wow. Now, the Delaware Genealogical Society also offers a bunch of free workshops yes. occasionally. Yes, every uh, third Thursday of the month throughout the year from uh, 10 till 4. Okay. And they have volunteers there to help people with their genealogy and answer some questions. 
but not to do their entire genealogy from them, but to get right. them started and using the correct resources. And maybe get them past a certain brick wall if yes. they might yeah. hit. Okay. Right. Uh, Heather, you know, with your clients, do you find that people are always ready to know everything about their family's past? You know, I haven't encountered too many clients not ready to, I guess you mean, hear the news about what right. their ancestors were. Um, I have run into having a client have certain expectations of what their descendants were and not be happy when I found out <laughs> that it was different. <laughs> right. You know, like, um, I, I, Heather, can you please find a Revolutionary War ancestor <laughs> so I can join the DAR? <laughs> and I did all the genealogy. I even found a link to another published genealogy, which brought me back to late 1600s, but there was no Revolutionary War ancestor. Mm -hmm. And when I emailed my client and let her know, she did not, she wasn't happy. But it could be an emotional experience. Oh, definitely. It can be very emotional. I mean, you've seen the reactions of, of those on the television shows, the mm -hmm. Who Do You Think You Are and Finding Your Family, or African American Lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I remember the one show where Spike Lee, I believe, picked up the dirt mm -hmm. from the ground where his ancestor actually owned the land and saved the dirt. And, and I was crying, yeah, because it is very emotional. Um, okay, well, and, and I want, last thing I want to talk about is just people who may not have an interest just yet in finding or looking into their genealogy. What is so satisfying about it, or what is exciting about it? And it can be a personal answer, obviously. I think of genealogy as an heirloom. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, some families don't have heirlooms, or they think of heirlooms like that old pair of cufflinks that belonged to your great uncle's whatever or a silverware or something. And this is something you can do no matter who you are. You, know, you can go to a library and get access to places like Ancestry. And you're creating an heirloom that gets passed down generation to generation. And 300 years from now, you know, I worked on somebody's heirloom and people who are gonna be here long after I'm gone are going to be enjoying the fruits of that labor. And I, it doesn't matter whether they know that I did it or mm -hmm. not, but I feel good to be a part of it. It's, it's like it, it never dies. It's immortal. Right. It's forever. And it's, I think it's better than cufflinks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> well, well, I, I do my own ancestry now, mainly, and I and watch people in my class do theirs and they get really emotional <clears throat> that they see this attachment because after all, we are part of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. We get half our DNA from our mother and half from our father and each of them gets half from each of their parents all the way back. And so we definitely become part of them and we have some of the traits that they have and we, we find out what kind of person they were by looking through all the old documents and uh, court cases and, and whatnot and, and wills and we say, well, that's where I got that trait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Heather and Thomas Doherty, thank you for being on FIRST this week. We are going to have several links for you to view, and we'll have Heather's there along with links to upcoming events at the Delaware Genealogical Society and to the PBS show Finding Your Roots, which got us interested in all of this.